Hello everyone and welcome to the Hockey Hub. Today we're doing another team preview and we're looking at the New York Islanders. Uh, now the New York Islanders haven't exactly had the greatest offseason and they still have some work to do when it comes to their restricted free agent Matthew Barzell. Uh, but they did lose some pieces and there's not really much that they added. They did add Austin Zarnick but he's kind of just a depth forward at this point. So we're going to have to skip past the additions part of the segment that I do for these team previews and we're just going to head straight into the subtractions. Now to start off, the New York Islanders did lose Johnny Boychuk. Uh, he did retire recently, and uh, I didn't exactly see that coming. I thought that his injury had healed from the whole skate to the eye thing. Uh, I watched that game. It was it was very scary to see that on broadcast. Uh, I was really hoping that Boychuk is going to be okay, and it's unfortunate that a lengthy career like his has to be cut short by an injury like that. The only good thing about that for the New York Islanders is that his six million dollar cap hit is off the books now. Not necessarily a good way to get it off the books, but it's still cap space. They also had to trade away Devon Taves to the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, this is a move that a lot of New York Islanders fans didn't like because they viewed Devon Taves as a really good up-and-coming young defender. He already is really good at just the age of 26. He has two very solid seasons under his belt as a more offensive defenseman. Uh, he did fit in very well in the Barry Trot system, and it is going to be interesting to see how well he fits in in Colorado's system. Uh, I don't necessarily know if Devon Taves is going to become a superstar or anything in Colorado, but he definitely has a lot of potential, and losing Taves really hurts their blue line depth, especially when he factor in they also lost Boychuk. They also lost their 1B goaltender in Thomas Grice. Varlamov is the starter, but Grice still played almost as many games and got a few starts in the playoffs as well. Grice has been a very consistently good goaltender for the New York Islanders for the last couple of years, and uh, it is kind of upsetting to see him go to a different team. He was kind of one of those guys that just, you know, feels like an Islander. He's been there for so long. He got them that one playoff series win back in 2016, and I'm sure he's going to be missed on the island. Now, the Islanders have a surprisingly good top six, led the way by their star young center, Matthew Barzell. But there's also Jordan Eberle, who is a solid top six winger. Uh, I really like Eberle. I think he's a very clutch player. We saw that in the playoffs, uh, you know, these past couple times that the Islanders have made the playoffs. And I'm um, a big fan of his overall game. There's also Josh Bailey, who's been surprisingly good ever since the departure of John Tavares. A lot of people thought that he was just kind of a byproduct of playing on the same line as Tavares, but Bailey has proved that he's a solid player in his own right. Uh, their captain, Anders Lee, is a big goal-scoring threat and a power forward and a very unique and effective player. I think Brock Nelson is a very underrated centerman as well. Uh, Nelson puts up very good numbers, has a good two-way game, and really doesn't get talked about that much. Anthony Bolvillier strikes me as a guy who has a lot of potential and is finally starting to realize that potential. He had a solid season this past year and was an effective player for them in the playoffs. So overall, it's a pretty well-rounded top six. Uh, not necessarily a lot of star power there outside of Matthew Barzell, uh, but the rest of those guys are very tall, uh, solid top six players, and it kind of surprises me. Uh, some of the low offensive totals, and I know that is a result of playing the Barry Trot system, but I do think that, you know, there is some offense to be expected there from those guys. Now, the Islanders' top four on paper isn't exactly one of the best in the National Hockey League, but they certainly play like it. Pulak and Pelik are one of the best defensive defense pairings in the NHL. Uh, I, I do think Barry Trotz's system obviously plays a big role in that, but Pelik and Pulak are very good together, and they complement each other's games so well, and I don't think that either one of them would be very effective without the other. Uh, I definitely think Pulak is probably the better defender between the two, but Pelik is really good in his own right as a good shutdown defenseman. Uh, there's also Nick Letty, and he's pretty good. A solid top four defender, a little bit of offensive upside, but more known for his defensive game. And then there's Scott Mayfield, who's a very big throwback defenseman. I believe he's around 6'4", 6'5". Uh, not necessarily a lot of offense there with Mayfield, but that's not what they're paying him for. He's a very reliable defender in his own zone and can really dish out the bodies. And uh, overall, he's a, quite a good defenseman. So the top four, despite not having any big names there, still plays like a star top four. The Islanders' goaltending coming into this season is actually looking pretty solid, even with the departure of Thomas Grice. The projected backup, Ilya Sorokin, is one of the high, most highly touted goaltending prospects in the entire NHL. He's put up very good numbers in the KHL, and Islanders fans have been patiently awaiting his arrival for years. I don't necessarily know what the ceiling is with Sorokin. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be a top 10 goalie in the league or anything, but I could definitely see him turning into quite a good starter. And then there's Simeon Varlamov. Varlamov had a great first season with the Islanders, and I think that was kind of to be 
be expected. The Islanders typically do make goaltenders look a little bit better than they are, and uh, in the playoffs he was really good for them as well. So overall their goaltending isn't spectacular, but it's really solid. It goes without saying that the Islanders' best player is Matthew Barzell. He's a star centerman and I think has serious point uh, total potential. He already is a very solid two-way game for such a young player. Uh, Barry Trotz as the head coach has really helped his development in that aspect, but offensively I think there's a lot more than what he's shown so far. In his rookie season he had 86 points and his numbers have kind of come down since then. That is a result of the Barry Trotz system, but I do think eventually his numbers should go back up and I fully expect Barzell to be an 80-90 to 90 point centerman with a very strong two-way game. To me Barzell is going to very soon crack uh, the list of top 10 centers in the NHL, but there's also some solid players there around him. Uh, Ryan Pulak, like I said, a uh, very good defender, uh, definitely a top four guy, arguably a top pairing guy, but then there's also Lee, uh, Nelson, and Bailey, I would say, as their best guys. Uh, so not necessarily a lot of star power there, just, you know, good players, solid players, and uh, really led the way by Matthew Barzell. But getting into a few players that I want to talk about. Now the first player I want to talk about is once again Matthew Barzell. But not necessarily Barzell, but more so his contract situation. Uh, Barzell still hasn't signed a contract, and Lou Lamorello, the Islanders GM, just seems to kind of be sitting on this one. With Johnny Boytuck's contract coming completely off the books, that does definitely help the Islanders' salary cap situation. He was probably their worst contract up there with uh, Andrew Ladd. Uh, but I still don't know if they have just enough cap space to lock up Barzell long term. I think in all likelihood Barzell's going to end up taking a bridge deal, maybe similar to the Braden Point contract for about three years or so, and that's probably best case scenario for both the player and team. I fully expect Barzell to re-sign at some point. They would be absolutely foolish to trade him. Barzell is definitely the franchise piece there, uh, so expect him to get a contract signed quite soon, especially since the season is coming up hopefully on January 13th. But another player I want to get into talking about is Jean-Gabriel Pajot. Uh, now, Pajot was a trade deadline acquisition for the New York Islanders, and the Islanders gave up a lot to get him. A first, a second, and a third round draft pick. That does seem like quite a lot for a guy they envision as their third line center behind uh, Barzell and Nelson, but Pajot is one of the best third line centers in the league, and we saw how effective he is in the playoffs. Uh, Pajot is a very clutch player with a lot of playoff experience from his days in Ottawa, and overall, he, he's a very solid two-way center, and although doesn't necessarily project in their top six, is definitely one of their better forwards and I think is a perfect fit for their system. And then I want to talk about the young defender Noah Dobson. Now with the departures of Devon Taves and Johnny Boychuk, I think Noah Dobson should be expected to get a big role. He did play enough games to consider it to have been his rookie season, uh, but he didn't play every game for the Islanders. He was a healthy scratch, but they kept him up so he could be with the team, so he could practice with the team, and kind of get that NHL feel and experience. But coming into a full season of Noah Dobson, I expect big things from Dobson. I think he is comparable to Ryan Pulak in a few aspects, but I think he should be better, and maybe in about four or five years should end up being the Islanders' best overall defenseman. Uh, Dobson was a high draft pick, 11th overall I believe, so the Islanders do have high expectations for him, and I'm hoping under the Barry Trot system he can really come into his own. Now on paper, I would have to say that the Islanders are still a bubble team. That being said, I do expect them to make the playoffs just because Barry Trotz is the best coach in the NHL, and seemingly no matter what team you put in front of him, he'll make them look like a true contender. But their roster on paper, I am not comfortable saying it's a contender. Their top four is solid, their top six is solid, their goaltending is solid, but nothing spectacular outside of Matthew Barzell. Uh, I do think that the Islanders probably make the playoffs, but I don't really know how far they go, and I don't really know where they would finish in whatever division they end up playing in. The Islanders are an interesting team when it comes to where they're going to finish, not necessarily the most interesting team to watch because of how defensive they play, uh, but they were a bit more exciting in this past year's playoffs. I know that the Tampa Bay and New York Islanders series was a really entertaining one, and overall, Islanders fans should be very happy with the direction of the team. They seem to be getting better year by year, and uh, you know, if some of these prospects like Wallstrom and Dobson can, can really break out and become big guys, the Islanders could end up being a true contender in the future. For now, I have to say that they're a bubble, but still like a playoff team. But that does it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching till the end. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys later. Bye for now.